Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to do something a little different. Um, ever since we've started our channel about a year and a half ago, we have had hundreds of comments, messages, and just requests of people wanting to know how we build our tracks. So the track you see here, the black and gray track, is actually the third track that we've done so far. In addition to the red, white, and blue fire and ice, as well as the red and green Christmas track. So this one is the third track and everything here, we're just going to kind of go over how everything is built, um, what we do to build our tracks, the different designs I use, and um, just some of the materials we use. So let's go ahead and start by taking a look at the center section of this black and gray track where this is actually the landing and second jump which uh, the other tracks that we've made so far don't have this one we wanted to be a little longer a little more intense with the racing so we made this whole center section and now we will go ahead and take a look at how that is built and afterward we will get into some of the materials and the process so with all of the jumps that we build, um, we use this ram board on top. It's just kind of stapled to a pine board. Um, the pine board is what we use to get all the profiles of the ramps, as well as underneath, we use that as the spacers or just some dowels, as you see there on the roller on the front of that second jump. Um, we just use the spacers here, screw everything together. And then the ram board is just stapled on top to give all of the jumps the profile that we're looking for. So this one worked really well for the landing and the jump. And obviously with this track set up here, we did two of them in the center because we wanted to be able to run some four wide races. Um, so we built two of them to be able to move them. Then same with the entry jump coming down the ramp. Everything is just built out of a profile um, and then it kind of clips into the starting gate here. These are just at, um, I believe this one's at a 45 degree angle is what I did this one at. We wanted it to be a little bit steeper and we used just some plastic there in the center for the lane dividers. Underneath the table, um, I do have just two by four base and this two by four cross member here where everything screws into from the top side. And that's what gives it the support and makes everything pretty stable. Um, so the trucks come down and then off into the second jump they go. This track is really cool. Um, and then for this, jump here once the angle is built again i just create my profile that i want i wanted this one to have a jump and include kind of a backflip ramp in it have a dowel in there to support the jump in the center some center boards and then everything's just cut out to fit inside this one kind of clips together which is cool i'll show you here it's got this little tab where it sticks out the back and a little indent there in the bottom where it just kind of clips in place and then once we're done, I'll probably staple that in place so it doesn't move as well once everything's painted and ready to go. Um, so that gives the lanes there, this jump, the second jump. And then off to the crush cars. Obviously, this is from the red, white, and blue track. There's our dog. And um, this is from the red, white, and blue track. So let's head to the garage and take a look at how some of this is built. And first off, please forgive the mess in the garage. Been working out here a while. Um, this here is the ram board. This is just a wooden floor covering that they use in construction. Um, it's kind of like a poster board, a little thicker. Works really well. It holds up really well. And we got our dog Shelby out here with us in the garage today. A few of you have seen her in the videos. Um, but let's talk about how I build some of the profiles of the jumps. So what I use is this three quarter inch um, pine board. You can use any type of three quarter inch wood as long as it's kind of flat and straight. Um, it is pretty cheap to be able to use. And then I just kind of create a template of what I want the jumps to look like. And I draw that out on some poster board or some cardboard, and then I trace it onto the wood so I can cut it out. Here's a little profile of the jump that we used inside that you guys saw. Um, and then some of the other stuff we use just kind of as far as tools go, um, just regular screws. We got some drills, um, some of the drill bits that we use for countersinking the screws, screw gun, fairly simple tools. Um, got some clamps that we're gonna use, scissors to cut everything out, just real basic stuff. Um, definitely when working in the garage, gotta stay hydrated got the water bottle for sure of course that has the uh, our time for adventures logo on it gotta have that right uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at some of the stuff for the crush cars here is one of the crush cars from the last setup um, 12 cars on this one got everything crushed I did take some measurements already of what I'm looking for on this new track setup so let's take a look at that um, I kind of just draw everything out get some rough measurements of what I want how many cars I want um, again this new one will be a little bit bigger but we're gonna take a look at kind of how we build the base um, kind of the side profiles of the jumps and just going over the cars in general here's some of the cars we get I get a lot of these cars just the real cheap ones um adventure force i think or find them at yard sales after all we are just gonna kind of crush them and destroy them anyway so we don't need the good hot wheels cars 
And then over here by the bandsaw, I've got some quarter inch plywood that I've already kind of started cutting out for a base for the crush car setup on this uh, this track layout. So this is just a general cut, a little piece of scrap I had laying around from the last build. Go ahead and start, kind of start laying out what you want. Um, get the cars on there, get some measurements. We're gonna need to see how wide we want it to be as well as get some measurements for like the side where I put the foam on for the dirt. I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. The little ramps on the side as well as the entrance ramp coming up to and coming off of the crush cars. But you kinda gotta lay everything out here and just get an idea of what you want. So once you have a size here that you know will kind of work, we will have to do some trimming on this yet to get it just right. But let's head back over to the bandsaw and cut our second piece. And one thing I will absolutely stress here is when you're cutting using any kind of power tools, um, obviously most adults would know this. We've had a lot of messages from adults on how to build these tracks. And we know a lot of kids will see these videos as well. So please kids, if you're gonna wanna build the track, please get help from your parents, okay, and be safe. So now that we have this second piece cut, we are gonna bring it back over and get some measurements and see where we want everything laid out. Kind of get some measurements in place to see what we wanna do with the entrance ramps. And as I mentioned here just a little bit earlier, this wood was um, some scrap from what we did on the last track. So these are a little bit wide. I wanna go ahead and cut these down a little bit to get more of the footprint that we want for these crush cars. So this one here, I will have to cut down a ways. Um, believe we're cutting this down here about three inches. And it's super easy on the bandsaw because I have a fence over there. I'll show you guys that here in just a second. We'll get that cut down. And so, yeah, once we have everything measured to where we want it and double check, it is a three inch cut. So we'll just head on over to the bandsaw, get the fence set up and get that cut done. Then we'll be ready for the next step. Now that we've got the bandsaw fence set up and we're ready to go, let's go ahead and get these two pieces cut down to what we need. All right, there we go, simple as that. And now that we've got it cut down to the length we need, we got the width already. Go ahead and set it back up. I do a lot of testing and checking uh, while I'm building track pieces just to make sure everything's um, lining up the way I want. So once we get the cars back on there, double check our measurements, we will go ahead and look back at the ramp coming up on the last cars that we built and double check the profile on it. On this ramp over here, we do have um, a lot of pieces that I've used before that I keep all the templates. For every track I make, I keep the templates for all these ramp profiles so I can kind of go back and look at them again. Uh, let's see if we have the one for this one. Here's a bunch of the templates here, all made out of that same ram board because it, it lasts pretty good. Um, it's a little bit thicker so you can trace it easy with the pencil. And let's see, do I have a template for that profile? I don't believe so. So let's go ahead and make one. So on the old ramp for the crush cars, we'll just come over, we'll measure the length of the ramp itself on the top where it's cut at an angle. We'll measure the overall length of the ramp because obviously there'll be a little bit different since one's at an angle. And we'll also see how high we want. Um, we're gonna go about three quarter inches tall. That way it's just even with the top of the crush cars when the truck comes over it. So let's head back over to the bench and make one of these little templates here and we'll check this out. All right, there we go. So got this one all cut out. Let's head back over to the table where the wood is at and check the fit. All right, so the reason we do this here out of 
the template board is you want to make sure everything kind of lines up first that way you're not just cutting a bunch of wood and wasting wood um, I have had problems before where I cut the wood wrong but obviously you make these templates make sure everything fits the way you want it to first then you can go ahead and just cut the wood the way you want it um, so this one here is looking pretty good it fits right over the baseboard that way we can attach it comes right up to the side of the roof on the car so this is gonna work let's go ahead and get these cut out looks like we will need eight of these for our crush car ramps let's do it head back over here to the saws where we have all the three quarter inch pine board and what we're going to do is we're going to lay this out on this pine board and cut a big section of this to the length of the ramp that we need that way they're all cut the same then we'll head over to the bandsaw and cut them out Again, to all the kids watching this video, please, 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 if you're gonna help make a track, do not do this without parents' guidance, okay? These tools are very dangerous and can cause harm, okay? I will not stress that enough in our videos. Regan has helped make some of the tracks here and I have always helped him with everything. So please remember to get your parents. So once we have this one section cut and we know the piece fits on there good, what we wanna do is try to get as many pieces out of here as we can. So we're gonna go ahead and lay this one out and I do have a, an adjustable protractor I'm gonna use here. And what we'll do is lay as many of these out on one piece of wood as we can. We'll leave enough room in between the pieces for the cut on the blade because um, that will take up a little bit of space. But we'll go ahead and lay these out with this adjustable protractor. I'll get the angle set and we will lay as many of these out on this block as we can because we don't want to waste material. So let's go ahead and get this laid out. And here we go. After that was sped up a little bit because I know it's kind of boring. Um, we have one piece, well, one piece of wood rather with all eight sections of jump on it. So let's go ahead and head over and get that cut out. Back over here at the bandsaw where it's a little easier to cut stuff like this. Um, and one thing you're going to notice is, yes, I measure this here to set up the fence. But even in all the measuring, I actually measured wrong. And you'll see that in the video here because the lines definitely do not line up. But the profile of the jump is exactly what we want. So let's go ahead and check that out. Then once all the widths are cut to what you want, you have to go ahead and remove the fence. That way I can cut the angle piece here. So let's go ahead and do that. Once you've got all the pieces cut for the entry ramp, go ahead and line them up, make sure they're all even, make sure you don't have to sand anything down or adjust anything, which we've definitely had to do here. Um, sometimes they're definitely not perfect, but once we have these all lined up, they're looking pretty good. Then next we will go ahead and mark where we need to cut out for the bottom piece where it will actually go over the quarter inch plywood on the bottom for the ramp. That way we can mount it. So we get our template here, Go ahead and mark out where that quarter inch piece is going to be because this is what we're going to cut next. And to cut these out, once I get all of these marked, I will set the fence up again and I'll actually use a stop. That way I can make all eight of these exactly the same. So let's go ahead and check that out. So here what I like to do since um, we have to cut out a quarter inch, I just use a small piece of quarter inch scrap, let's raise the arm here just a little bit, and I put it in between the fence and the blade, and that way I know that that blade is going to cut right where we need that quarter inch gap to be. So I set my fence actually using this as a spacer, get it nice and snug over there, that way once it goes through we know exactly what that dimension is going to be. Then once this is set, I'll go ahead and make a stop for the length or the depth of the cut that I need for the base to be. There we go, nice and smooth, check that out. Let's go ahead and add our stop. 
Now here I also know that I want these jumps to come up on the base about two inches. So to measure that, you actually need to go from right where the teeth are on the blade. You'll see here I put the ruler right to the front edge of the blade. That way I know that's where the cut's gonna end. And I'll go ahead and mark the fence and put a stop up there. That way I can cut all, all eight of these exactly the same. All right, let's go ahead and make the cuts for the base plates. And there we go, run it all the way into the stop, back it out, and that's exactly the cut we're looking for. Let's go ahead and do the rest. And now to finish up these little entrance ramps, all we have to do is remove the stop, go ahead and remove the fence because we'll need it out of the way to go ahead and make that last cut to remove that little last piece of material. So let's get this out of the way and we'll finish up cutting our entrance ramps. And just like so, that ought to do it. Let's go ahead and do the rest. And there we are, we got all eight pieces. Let's head back over to the table, see how they fit. And now that we have all eight of the entrance ramp pieces cut, it's time to cut the support for the center. That way the trucks don't just push down on the ram board all the way. So to do that, I just use a one inch by one inch dowel and we will cut this to the angle of the entrance ramps and it'll fit right in between. So let's go ahead and get that done. And what I use to do this next step is I just take one of these angle pieces here for the ramp, come back over here to the bandsaw and get that table set up at the angle of the ramp. That way when we cut the center section through, it will be the same angle as what this ramp piece is. So let's check out what the angle is and get our table set up for that. Once the table is set up to the angle that we need, we need to go ahead and cut this one by one square to the same width of the distance in between the ramps. That way it'll fit in there tightly. So let's get these cut, then we will mark it at the angle that we need and head back over to the bandsaw and get those cut. Okay, there we are. The dowels are a nice fit in between the entrance ramp pieces. And now we just need to mark where that angle is gonna be. We already know the angle. We just need to mark where it's at. That way we know how deep of a cut to make. Once we have that and marked on there, then we can head back over to the bandsaw, get the fence set up and go ahead and cut all four of these. I got the fence back in place here and the blade will line up with the mark on it. Sorry, the camera keeps kind of going in and out of focus here because I'm trying to zoom in. But then you just make sure your blade lines up there with the mark on the wood and the fence is ready to go. So now we can just cut all of them in one big shot. Let's do it. And one other thing I want to mention real quick is since there's not much room here, I do use some scrap wood for a push stick to be able to push this through. That way your fingers stay clear of the blade. So let's go ahead and get this done. 
Once again, once I get the first one cut, I always go back over and check before I do the others. You don't want to just set up the fence and assume you're right and then have four pieces that don't fit correctly, which um, I'm talking from experience here. I've actually done. So once we test it out, Shelby's out here helping, of course, and look at that. Looks pretty good. We're within a few thousands. I think that's pretty good for what we're doing here for making some ramps for die cast toys. So once we know that one fits, we will head back over to the bandsaw, cut the others. All right, with all of these cut, we checked the fit one last time. And when everything looks good, I think it's time to go ahead and start attaching all these pieces to the base. That way we can get these crush car platforms built. I got the first little section of the entrance ramp already attached just with a couple nails from, or sorry, a couple staples from the staple gun rather. So let's go ahead and show you how to do that. And with this, um, I always staple them down and then use the hammer to make sure they're really flat. So let's check it out. Okay, once we got the entrance ramp pieces attached, I want to clamp the center section since from the backside we can't see where it's gonna be. So I'm gonna clamp it in place, make sure it's straight, and then go ahead and nail it down. And there it is, first center section done. Everything looks nice and smooth. Let's go ahead and do the rest. Okay, there we go. Both of these pieces done, got the bases done, and they match up pretty well. Now it's time for the fun part because next we get to take and crush some crush cars. Isn't that what monster truck racing is all about? We have all these crush cars over here. Like I said before, some of these I have bought at yard sales, um, swap meets, people have in bins, got the big hammer here, and we're gonna crush these and make them look like monster trucks run them over. So we take these little cars. These are Adventure Force cars. I think you get like 20 of them for 10 bucks or something because we're just gonna destroy them and paint them anyway. So might as well use the cheap ones, right? Um, so let's get all these ready and we will go ahead and start doing some crushing. Again, kids, if you're gonna do this and you're gonna use the hammer, make sure you watch your fingers and please wear safety glasses. Do this with adult supervision. Thank you. All right, so let's get this first one crushed. Um, I just use a vise. The back of the vise works really well. It's a solid. You can use the ground. You can use a rock. Uh, anything you want to smash it on. Regan has done it before out in the driveway. It works really well. So you don't want to go too crazy. You just want to kind of flatten them out, make it look like it's been run over. And then we're going to glue them all side by side anyway. So let's get the rest of them done.
All right, there we go. We have a lot of newly crushed cars. Looks like monster trucks were over here just crushing everything, doesn't it? <laughs> so let's go ahead and get these laid out on the platforms how we want them. And next we will go ahead and start gluing these in place because we don't want them to move once they're on the table. Um, the first set I did not glue in place and it's kind of become sort of a problem. I mean, it, it's held up, but when you go to move tracks or swap tracks out like we do, then you got to figure out where the cars all go. So all we do for this one is I use a hot glue gun. Uh, we have battery powered one, you can get a corded one, it doesn't matter, and we just glue them down, get them all in place, and then we'll be ready for the next step. Let's get to gluing. Once all our new crush cars are glued down into place, they won't be moving. Um, let the glue cure a little bit, let everything cool down for a second, because next is kind of really fun. Um, the next step on this to do some of the dirt on the side is a really fun little step. So let's take a look at how that is done. For this one, I always lay down protective paper because it can get a little bit dirty because what I use here for the dirt on the sides is actually just some um, insulation expanding foam and this stuff expands like crazy. So I like to try to keep it away from everything. I have a little gap underneath and we will get this sprayed onto the sides. Here we go. This is what it looks like afterwards. Um, unfortunately, I didn't have the camera on to actually spray it. So I just spray it right along the cars and it expands and foams up next to the car. So there is a lot of excess here that we will have to cut off, but the finished product is really cool. So we cut it off with this drywall knife and an X-Acto knife and just kind of get the look we're looking for. And once we're done, because of the bubbles in the foam, everything looks like it's just dirt that's pushed up to the car. So let's go ahead and cut this down and check it out. So the spray foam generally cuts pretty easy, but obviously be careful since we're using sharp objects. Uh, again, kids, definitely have your parents help you if this is the route you guys are gonna go, gonna use to make um, jumps kind of like ours, okay? So we just cut any excess foam off Cut the big pieces off of the side first, and then what we will do is we will take and shape it to the cars to kind of get the look we're looking for. So let's go ahead and get all this cut. Now, once you get some of this cut down a ways and you get the angle you want, you can go ahead and use your thumb or even some other tools or something and push down. You can indent the foam. It's really easy to work with. Um, you can push it down and create little craters in it and even use the knife and do some cutting to make it look like it's more piled up dirt. So let's check this out. Okay, and here are the two almost completed um, crush car obstacles for the new track. We will have to put the ram board on this one still, but this is kind of the finished product of what the foam looks like. The foam really goes up in between the cars, have the angle for the ramp, that way the trucks can get up and down, make a match here in the middle. Um, that way, once they're put together side by side, the trucks will still be able to roll over the top of it. So that's pretty cool there. A little bit lower on the sides where they can come up the side. Um, so later we will put the ram board on the entrance and exits to the jumps. We'll have to get that done, but we're gonna go ahead and cut a few more um, obstacles out of wood and get everything ready first. And then we'll come back with the ram board and finish this up. So let's check out the next jump. 
So the idea I had for the next obstacle using crush cars, this one's gonna be um, a little bit smaller in footprint, but taller. And the ram, or I'm sorry, not the ram, the um, crush cars will be a little more exposed on the jump. And we will have a ramp on both sides of the crush cars that the trucks can hit. So let's go ahead and measure the cars here and kind of get a footprint just like we did in the first one. We need a footprint of what the cars are gonna be. That way we have a base we can start out with. So this one we're looking about five and a half inches wide. Um, and what do we have here? We got about two and five eighths, two and three quarters um, side to side there. So that'll be kind of the base for these cars. We're gonna go ahead and cut that out of three quarter inch board and we will get this all kind of started. And then we will do the same thing we did before where we will use um, some RAM board and make a template of the profile we want to use. Like here's some older ones where we have like the entrance ramp, that one's two and a half inches tall. Um, so we'll just go ahead and use all these old templates to make a profile of what these cars are gonna be. So again, double checking measurements, always double checking, and then we will get this laid out. So let's go ahead and check it out. Now, once we got these two pieces cut, obviously come back and double check. We're gonna go ahead and put the cars on top and the width is correct, but notice the car stick over the edge. And that's because I still need to attach the side pieces for this jump. And those are three quarter inch wide. So I will show you that here in just a second. Okay, so now that we have the top plate cut out to the dimensions we want, we need to go ahead and make the template for the side plates for this jump. So this is gonna be a new jump, um, one we haven't had on any of our tracks before. And this is gonna be kind of a double where the crush cars are more exposed. That way, once the trucks come up the ramp, the trucks will actually hit the crush cars. So this will be a little bit different. The trucks will act a little bit different on the track and this will be kind of cool. So here, I'm just gonna lay out with one of the templates that we already had. Um, I believe this is a two inch by two inch or a two and a half by two and a half possibly. Uh, for the first jump and then I'll kind of show you how we're gonna do the other side once this one's laid out. So once I get the curve here that I want for this one, then I need to do the top piece and that's what the first jump's gonna look like. So then I need to do the top piece and this I want to come down about a quarter of an inch. That way the crush cars can kind of sit on the top and it'll be exposed. So see, it'll be kind of just up the side just a little bit. And then let's get this marked out and I'll show you what we're gonna do on the other side of this jump. All right, so got the center section marked out there where I want it and got the other lip, uh, lip on the other side. And now what I wanna do is um, I don't want the same jump on this side. I want it to be a little bit longer. So what we need to do is if this one were the same, obviously um, that's what it would look like, but I want it to be more of a gradual longer ramp. So we're gonna move this back and kind of mark where we want it to be. And then I'll show you how I get the curve for the jumps. So mark this one out and then I'll show you that here real quick. So a couple different options you can do is you can have one side curved and one side straight. So you can go ahead and mark it out straight if you want. That way the trucks just come straight up the side. Um, I like to do it a little bit curved. It looks a little more real. So like if you're doing it straight, that's kind of what it would look like there. Um, but for the curve, what I do is I end up using anything that's round to mark it out. I've used anything from plates, 
bowls, cups, um, rolls of tape I've used to mark out curves. It just depends on the radius you want. Now I do have a piece that I cut out from another track design here, this big round piece. Um, let's go ahead and see how big this is real quick. This is, what do we got, about a foot. So 12 inches around. I think this curve will work great for this ramp. So what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and line this circle up with the two points on the top of the ramp and the entrance of the ramp and just go ahead and draw this and just trace it. And that's gonna be my curve for this other jump. So obviously this is gonna be a lot bigger than the curve on the other side. So we just go ahead and trace this out. And now we have a much longer gradual curve on one side and a like short steep curve on the other. And this is gonna work great for this crush car design. So let's go ahead and get this cut out and then we will get it cut out of some wood. Okay, so now that we got the template of the side plates that we want, um, everything's cut out on the template. So we'll just go ahead and transfer it over to the two and a half inch um, pine board that I have. And once all these are laid out, we will head back over to the bandsaw and cut these out. Now, when you're laying these out on the wood, um, because of the shape of the template, what you wanna do is kind of stagger the layout so that way you're not wasting a lot of wood. Let's see how I do this here. So once the first layout is complete, what you wanna do is either flip over the template or flip over the board and lay out the next one. That way they kind of interlock into each other and it'll be easier to cut out and you're not gonna waste as much material. Um, some of those little pieces in between the boards or in between the jumps rather, I save those for like little gussets or just little pieces that we wanna to build too. Um, I have a whole stack of them or a bucket. So um, you can save that stuff if you want or just throw it away. Let's get these laid out and head over to the bandsaw and get these cut. Okay, there we are. Four side plates all laid out. Let's head over to the bandsaw and it's time for some more cutting. Let's do it.
All right, here we are. We have four really cool side pieces all cut out, matched up, ready to go. Let's um, head back over to the table and get these all put together. This is gonna be awesome. And here we are with the side pieces all ready to go. These turned out really cool. I'm excited to see what these look like with the cars on them, but I do have um, two of them that are already clamped up here and ready to start drilling on and start getting these things screwed together. That way they're ready to go. So I've just got them clamped up um, even on the top and I pre-drill and countersink everything to help um, just kind of put everything together and make it more flush. So let's go ahead and do that one. Now, one thing you're gonna notice here is um, I go ahead and I put two screws in the top of each one of these. I kind of center them up with the top board to keep it right in the middle of the material, give it a little more to grip onto. But right here, you're gonna see when I put this screw in, I actually messed up and I used the wrong size drill bit and countersink. I used the one that was too small. So as soon as I put this screw in, we have a little problem with this one. Check it out, right there, crack. And that piece is now no longer any good. I mean, we could glue it together. Um, it's split right on the top. It would be okay to glue it together, clamp it together, redrill the hole and um, go that route. But I just can't believe I used the wrong drill bit. So mistakes do happen. Um, I've done a lot of woodwork, built a lot of different things. And of course, uh, mistakes just happen once in a while. So um, I go ahead and drill this one and then realize it's the wrong drill bit. So I will go ahead and get that switched out. Then what we're gonna have to do is go ahead and either glue or um, just redo another side piece. So we'll check that out here in just a second. So here's a little better look at the crack, um, where it cracked right across the top of it. And that's kind of when I realized that I had the wrong drill bit. So let's grab a drill bit, a um, little bit bigger, a little bit bigger countersink. Um, I'm using number eight screws, I believe. And that was a number six um, drill bit and countersink. So that was the problem. So I'm just gonna go ahead and redrill these, make the countersink a little bit bigger. And of course, then the holes will still line up. Make sure I double check it this time so I don't split two of them. Um, but like I said, you know, mistakes happen and you just kind of got to deal with it. You can either glue it, fix it that way, or go ahead and just cut another piece. So um, let's continue with putting these together and check out more of this video. And here we go, that one definitely looks a little better. Nothing split, everything goes together well, nice and smooth up on the top. And now it is time to put the rest of them together. Here we go. So since I had the template there and some extra wood, I just went ahead and cut another one out. Um, that way everything's nice and fresh for this track. They match up with the other ones. So we're ready to keep on building. Okay, so now we got the first one together. Um, one screw on each side just to hold it together and make sure everything's good. I wanna go ahead and put the cars on it now just to double check our measurements. So if we have to trim the center of it down, now would be a great time to do it since it's not all completely finished. Um, just go ahead and grab four cars, set them up there, kind of look and see where the jumps meet, um, up with the side of the body, make sure it's the profile I'm looking for. Everything's gonna fit on there okay. Some of these cars are wider than others, so it makes it a little difficult. So you try to squeeze them together and they just pop out of place. So sometimes you gotta swap cars around or if they're smash funny. Um, but there we go, that is the first of this um, four wide, or I guess four car jump um, where they're kind of flush with the end and the jump comes right up to the side of the car. This will be cool. Let's go ahead and build the rest of them.
and there we are we got them both done nice and smooth ready to go grab some of that ram board and now it is time to cover the lip of the jumps now with this ram board because of the way it's rolled you'll see the ram board has a curve to it um, it would be nice if the printing was on the other side that way it was kind of underneath when you went to paint it but because of the curve that's the way i put it on the jumps um, that way you don't have to try to mess with it and all we do is just set it up there and it kind of just forms to it already um, so let's go ahead and get this ram board cut out we got to measure what we need and normally i just cut it out with some scissors or an exacto knife um, and a straight edge so let's go ahead and start with that So for this step here, I just want to kind of double check my jumps, uh, measure both of them. You don't want to just measure one because you could have a little tolerance difference. Um, so go ahead and measure both your jumps, make sure both are the same width and the same length. So we definitely want to check that first. Um, I have had a couple where I built them, one's like a 16th of an inch difference. Um, so then you just have to go ahead and make the covering that much different. But these ones here are looking pretty good. So again, we want to go with the curve. So we need to make sure I cut it to where the curve goes up the ramp. So let's get these marked out and ready to go. Now again, one thing I wanna say here, obviously I'm using um, a blade here and a straight edge just to cut this because it is a little bit thicker. Make sure if this is the way you're gonna do it, do not do it on a countertop or um, a dining room table or anything. This is just a scrap piece of stainless steel tabletop I had laying around that I do a lot of work on. So if it cuts it, it doesn't really matter. But you sure don't wanna be cutting up your coffee tables or kitchen tables or cabinets or anything like that. So. Again, kids, if you're gonna be doing this using sharp tools, scissors, anything else, make sure you have your parents help you and that you're cutting this in a spot that is okay to cut on, okay? Otherwise, it's super easy just to use scissors as well. So let's go ahead and get these marked up. We got them the length we need. And um, here in just a second, we'll cut the width and we'll get them set. And here it is, we got the ram board cut for both sides of the jump. Go ahead and just test fit it one more time, hold it up there, make sure you line up with the bottom, line up with the top. Now we do have a little gap on the top there, but that's okay, because the crush cars are gonna go there. Um, normally I would staple that up there as well, that way it doesn't create any problems with tearing. Um, but with it lined up good, we're gonna go ahead and staple these on here and get these two completed.
All right, so got both of these complete. All the RAM board is on. Let's get the cars on here and see how the final product looks. Make sure it's exactly what we were looking for. So we want to line up the cars to where they just kind of fit up there nicely and then just take a look at it. Let's see. Oh yeah, check that out. That's exactly what I was looking for. Now, of course, these will also get glued down. They're popping up here a little bit in the middle. We're gonna glue them down with the hot glue just like we did the other crush cars. Um, but this is exactly what I was looking for. That way, right from the side, the ramps kind of come up and hit the side of the car. This will make for some cool racing and cool tricks. The kids will have a lot of fun with this. Um, what do you say we head back inside here for a minute and take a look at the progress being made? And we definitely gotta try this out and see if this track even works. I haven't tried it yet, so let's go. All right, back in the monster truck room, monster trucks everywhere. The new hour time for adventures uh, decal that we put up, got that rocking. Um, got some of the layout going here, obviously in raw form. Here's the old fire and ice track, a lot of different pieces. Uh, but this one's looking really cool, a little bit different. Four, four wide racing. Um, it's gonna have a higher jump because we have a landing here in the middle with a second big jump. And then um, crush cars on the sides are looking pretty good. Here are the crush cars for the end. Obviously with this track, what I wanted to do is make this track a lot longer, um, give the trucks more space to race and just have two or three jumps. So obviously we have a landing in the middle, which I'm not really sure how the die cast monster trucks are gonna do with that because obviously the wheels move and they're just toys. It's hard to get them just to go straight. But let's kind of get everything laid out here and give it a shot. Let's send a truck down the track and see if this thing works. Um, I guess, I hope it's gonna work since we made it this far and it's time to give something a try. So let's do it. There we go, check that out. This is going to be a long track. Um, the last one from the top to the jump was only about six feet. Uh, this track overall, including the pits, is about um, 12 feet long. So there's plenty of room here. This is going to make for some awesome racing. Let's grab a truck here, Bakugan, and see if it'll do it. Whoop! Oh, it made the landing on that one, but didn't quite go straight off the second jump. Let's give it another shot. Will it go all the way? Lands, jumps, oh yes, all the way to the end of the track. That was awesome. These trucks are gonna do great on these races. This is working good. Let's try it one more time. Will it make it all the way? Jump, land, boom. Nice little wheelie there at the end across the line. This is awesome. This is gonna be some great racing, some good tournaments. There's gonna be a lot of crashing on these four wide races. The kids are gonna love it. So let's go ahead and uh, move on to the next task. So that little whoosh there was like eight hours in video land. <laughs> um, so what I did is I went ahead and just cut out some of the next jumps. And obviously we've kind of already gone over how I do that, how I lay everything out. Um, kind of got a little blank space there we're gonna fill in later. But I went ahead and cut out some of these other jumps here that I wanted. I got like a little tabletop double roller. Um, here's another jump where one's curved and one's straight. That's kind of cool. And then we have this big roller that we're gonna be doing. The trucks will have to go up and over. So let's head back to the garage and get them covered. Here we are with some more Ram board and we have all the other jumps I've cut out. Um, obviously earlier we could see that. So let's go ahead and get these covered up.
And there we go, all finished up. What do you say we head back into the room one more time and uh, get these laid out on the monster truck table and check them out. Well, here it is everyone, the new track design in raw form. Um, obviously at this point, a lot of people have seen the videos of the new track. We've had races, we've had reveals because this took a while to um, edit and get up on the channel. So sorry it took so long, but here is the general idea of how we build the track. Let's do a little fly over here and take a look at it. Coming up the starting gate, we still have a little bit of work to do there. Got to make that electronic still. Obviously you can see that in the videos, but this is what the trucks see. This is cool, check it out. Here we go, let's go racing. Up off the first jump, it's a big jump, big air land. Off the second jump, over the crush cars, to the line for the win. What a race. Thanks everyone for watching our videos, and we'll see you next time. Thanks again for watching Our Time for Adventures. Until next time.